guys and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Reviews. Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video and I'm doing my top 10 perfumes of 2017. First off, I know I'm late. Don't blame me. Taylor Swift pun. Um, but I just, time got ahead of me. I really wanted to do this video. Originally I wanted to do a, like, I was going to take all the perfumes that were released in 2017 and kind of rank them. But... 2017 was half lackluster, half really good for me. There's some really good fragrances that came out of 2017. And then some I just didn't really want to waste more camera time with because they didn't really impress me or what have you. So, um, I, 2017 was very kind of half-half with me. Um, but I did narrow it down to a top 10, which, oh my god, girl, that was hard. Um, and... I'm going to show you guys my non-existent editing skills, yay, um, and I'm going to do, like, reveals before each one, um, and show you, like, if I do, like, I'll be like, and number 10 is blah, and then I'm going to pause for a second, and then hopefully I'm going to put, like, a little, little slide here that gives you, like, all this information about it. We'll see if it actually happens. We'll see if my non-existent editing skills work the way I want them to. So, anyway, 2010, or 2010, wow. 2017 top 10. Um, if you guys notice, I'm gonna start looking this way now more versus than this way. Um, I just did a little bit of a remodel in this room, like I rearranged some stuff. Like you guys might be able to notice uh, some of these shelves back here don't look the same way. Um, there's gonna be a collection video coming soon, which I did not know. I mean, I knew, but I forgot. My iPhone will film in uh, 4K 60 frames per second. So my plan is when I do my updated collection video for you guys that'll be in 4k 60 frames per second because i'm hopefully going to film it on my iphone we'll see so but back into the main reason this video and that is my 2017 top 10 favorite fragrances there's a spencer and he doesn't know what he wants to do he doesn't even know that he's on camera but anyway so coming in at number 10 we have christina aguilera's glam x insert pun about this fragrance if not pun, but information. Anyway, so this one was kind of the celebratory of Christina's 10 years in fragrances. This was her first fragrance um, released under partnership with Elizabeth Arden. Now, I really, really like this one because it, um, like, it's syrupy and it's sweet, but it's also kind of floral. And it's a very, like, I think fall night type of fragrance. It works really, really well. Um, and it's the first Christian Aguilera fragrance I really, really liked. Um, most of them are kind of on the more floral side, which I said in the review for this. And it's just, I, this one definitely was a standout for me, um, from 2017. So that was number 10, to, uh, Christian Aguilera's Glam X. And at number 9, we have Lux by Jennifer Aniston. So this perfume was the last perfume that she released before chapter one so she released chapter one um in the fall and then this came out in kind of like the summertime um this is just a beautiful fragrance it's very luxurious like it said it's luxe it is a gorgeous gorgeous fragrance it's very vanilla -y, reminiscent of her previous work jay but this is kind of more turned up more sexy not as beachy as some of her other fragrances are this one's just nice in that aspect that it's not super beachy like a lot of her fragrances are which isn't a bad thing but this one it was the first time she didn't do it beach inspired and it kind of was just classic and pulled back and i shot the promo for this on piano keys and it's just very elegant it kind of reminds me of that in that aspect so number nine is lux by jennifer anderson in at number eight and i have these like in order on my phone that's why i keep looking down to make sure i'm putting these in correct order because it took me, like, 45 minutes to put these in order. Lord have mercy. Number 8 is Princess of Hearts by Vera Wang. This was released early 2017, if I remember right. Maybe it was, like, more summertime. But this has, like, this really strong watermelon note. And it's very candy and just very lovely. Like, it's super sweet. It's super candy-like. And it's more of a hard candy and, like, a rock candy. Then some of other things which can get into like marshmallows and like those type of candies. This is definitely more of a like a really fruity hard candy fragrance and I love that. 
I do find myself wearing this one the most out of the princess line. Um, I just don't want to use a whole lot of it because I don't want my one ounce to run out. So, this is number n or eight. Princess of Hearts. Sorry, I had to swallow because just, ugh. Anyway, getting over being sick and, yeah. Number um, seven, correct if I'm right. This is Shawn Mendes' signature. This was his debut fragrance for men and for women. I love this fragrance. I don't know if this is, this isn't the bottle I normally use. Um, I love this fragrance. It's it does remind me a lot of Britney Spears' private show, but there's something a little bit more turned up about this fragrance. Um, slightly different. Private show's more like creme brulee and like coffee and that kind of like warm, while this is more maple syrup. So this has like almost like a slightly stickier quality to it, but some of the, like the other notes he has mixed in here that weren't in the Britney one just make this slightly more unisex but not like it's very very like comparable they're like almost identical but this one's just a little bit different um and if private show was released in 2017 then it would be in here but it wasn't so private uh number seven is Shawn Mendes's signature number six is I Am Rock by Shakira this one oh my god you guys let me tell you this one is so complex for a Shakira fragrance. I mean, her fragrances do have a complexity to them normally, but this one is so complex and it's so, like, good. And, it, like, it has this black pepper note in, at the very beginning that I wasn't quite sure if I was going to like, but it does something with the vanilla in this fragrance, and it really does evolve from the opening to the base. and does kind of remind me of Paris Hilton's Gold Rush, but this one has just a little bit of an edge to it that the black pepper adds that makes this kind of mysterious and kind of different. So, I Am Rock coming in at number 6 for 2017. If I did this right, we should be down to top 5. Yes, we are. So, number 5 is a fragrance that snuck up on me and something I wasn't quite sure when I first, like, first heard of it, first smelled if I was going to like it. And then I bought it because I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And then I started wearing it more. And, oh my god. And that is uh, Nectar Love by DKNY. I always want to call this Love Nectar for some reason. But it is Nectar Love. And this one I've seen compared a lot times to, like, Viva La Juicy and that kind of range. But... It does have the Viva La Juicy, like, scent to it, but there's this honey note and this floral note underneath of it that make this fragrance so complex and so not juicy that, like, I find myself wearing this more and more and more when I'm telling myself, like, oh, I'm kind of in, like, I'm kind of in that juicy mood. I'm kind of in that Viva, that caramely sweet mood. This one takes it to a different level. It makes it almost more wearable because it's more of a honey. So it's almost more of a natural sweetness than like a made up sweetness with the caramel. That makes sense. This one's beautiful. If you guys ha can find this for a good price, I have the 100 milliliter and the 50 milliliter. Um, and I actually got like the shower gel with this. And I actually used the shower gel for this. And I don't normally use like the body lotions, shower gels on the regular. Like, I'll try them when I first get them. But I don't normally try them. But this one, the scent is just so good. And it lasts a really long time on me as well. So, I would love for, like, I don't know if they made a lotion for this, but I would love to get a lotion for this just because it smells so good. So, that is number five, Nectar Love. I almost caught myself again. Almost called it Love Nectar. In at number four. And I will tell you, this top four was the hardest top four to do and there was two fragrances that were battling it out. And, I mean, number one was, like, a clear winner. Like, I didn't have to think about number one. It was building them back and deciding who I liked more, who I didn't like more, who I was wearing more, who I wasn't wearing more. And, like, it got into it. So, top four. Number four, we have Viva La Juicy Glace. This fragrance. Oh, my freaking Jesus. It is, I'm a huge Viva Juicy fan, like, I 
wear all the Viva La Juicy's on a regular. Um, Viva La Juicy La Fleur was my favorite Viva La Juicy fragrance for the longest time. And then we started creeping up with Sucre and Glace. And oh my freaking god, you guys. These last few releases from them have been amazing. Glace in particular. Glace still, in my opinion, um, outranks their newest one, which I'll be doing a review on soon, and that is the Viva La Juicy Soiree. This bottle is freaking gorgeous. Um, but I will be getting a review of that up soon. I still think Glace beats out um, Soiree, because, like, it's so different from Viva La Juicy, but it still works in that family. And it's got this floral note to it that I, re I do really like florals, but I like my florals a little bit more soft, a little bit more elegant. I don't like them to be just strictly florals. Um, and Viva La Juicy does a really good job of mixing in their florals. And I really, really like this one because it is, besides Rosé, the most floral interpretation of the Viva La Juicy lineup. And it's just gorgeous. Even La Fleur isn't as floral as this, in my opinion. And if you have smelled both of them, you'll kind of get what I mean with that. So that was number four. That was Viva La Juicy Glace. This next two, like, almost tied each other. But number three, we have VIP Private Show by Miss Britney Spears. This fragrance is so good. This one is so sweet and, like, candy and, like, summery. And it's beautiful. And it's not something I've really smelled before. Now, there's been fragrances that have kind of done similar things to it and done them in different ways. I've noticed this type of fragrance is definitely becoming a thing. And I'm not mad about it. Because Britney was kind of the first one to really introduce it onto, like, the celebrity market. And then a couple other people have picked up similar cues to it. And, I mean, it's just kind of like a... Fragrances go through themes, and this is one I'm very happy that we're going through. This one's just, it's kind of bitter, it's kind of sour, it's kind of candy-like, it's still pretty, it's still girly, it still smells like a perfume without being too sweet, and like, Brittany is like the queen of sweet fragrances, and I love this one because it is a different type of sweet than the bakery confection sweet. I really like these kind of like hard candy sweets. This is number three, VIP Private Show by Brittany Spears. Number two is Brittany same bloom can you see i really like 2017 with Brittany because this is so good this one wins 2017 because it was the new interpretation of a classic fragrance i loved which was a scottish cherry in the air which is over there and i've got me and my husband have gone through an almost an entire bottle of a three like a 3.3 ounce bottle of cherry in the air and then we had to stop ourselves from wearing it so much. And we, he went through a whole one ounce bottle of it on his own. And like, so that fragrance is really special. And that kind of like brings back a lot of memories for us. And this one is like a new interpretation of it. It's a little bit more springy. This has like, I call this has a basin of a dryer sheet. And it sounds so weird. But if you smell this fragrance, you know what I mean. And it's like the world's prettiest dryer sheet. And I freaking love it. And this is top two best like so good i wore through my one ounce quite a bit i started denting into this one it's just such a good fragrance and i wear it a lot so number two was fantasy and bloom by miss britney spears now number one if you guys have followed me throughout 2017 on different platforms this should be a no-brainer for you guys on what my favorite fragrance 2017 is and i feel like a lot of people like this fragrance as well in that top because it was such a good fragrance but little does that mean anything because this person always releases amazing fragrances the last few interpretations that she's released have been amazing and it is of course crush or kiss why did i call it crush girl cr i need to go to bed um kiss by rihanna 2017 best fragrance in my opinion i freaking love this fragrance it's very similar to Viva La Juicy Glace, but this is a little bit more floral, a little bit more girly, a little bit more badass. It's got this, like, plum in it that makes a very sharpened edge to this fragrance without making the fragrance too edgy. The florals kind of come in and soften it up. And this is very reminiscent of Rihanna, in my opinion. This is very kind of, like, her sensual fragrance, in my opinion. Like, if Rihanna, if I was thinking of Rihanna, it smelled like 
kind of like this. Between this and Crush are like the two fragrances I think Rihanna smells like. But I love this fragrance. I actually already have a backup bottle of this fragrance. And I just, mm, I love this fragrance so much. It's so good and so juicy and floral and powdery. And it's a lot of the things I don't like in fragrances combined into one and I like it. And I don't know why combining a bunch of things I don't like. Like I don't really like powdery fragrances. I don't really like these kind of like soft white floral fragrances. But that's kind of what to put in here with the plum. And I just love the way that this fragrance is done. And I see this fragrance quickly going into my, my all time top 5 favorite. If I could even make a top 5 favorite. So there you guys go. There's my list of my top 10 fragrances of 2017. Are you surprised by any? Are you not surprised by any? What are you guys' thoughts? There's some fragrances that like, like I said, upcoming we'll be getting the Viva La Juicy Soiree review. This fragrance right here, oh, I want to review this so bad for you guys. It is such a freaking good fragrance. So good. I love it. I've been wearing it a lot since I've got it. It beautiful fragrance. I can't talk much about it because I don't know much about it and I don't want to make myself look like an ass and say anything. So, Rock the Night Shakira for Women. Beautiful fragrance. As soon as I get notes for this or anything that I can actually review it on, I will because probably one of the best releases of Shakira's lineup. So, we'll be on the lookout for that. My collection video will be coming soon. I promise. I just, I, I need to get it done. It, it'll happen eventually. I just been cleaning and rearranging and went through my closet and got a bunch of like all of my perfume stuff and posters and stuff that I have like the bags and whatnot that I have extra of. I wanted to get all in one closet because I got them in the basement and all over in the house. I kind of just wanted them in here and then I did a little bit of rearranging. So now it's just kind of getting everything back, putting everything away. The room is kind of messy right now. The great thing about YouTube is I get to pick what you guys can see and what you guys can't see. So, sup. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout. Lots of new stuff coming. Super excited. Fragrance Knockout still coming probably the first week of February, hopefully. If I can get it, I'll let you guys know. And be on the lookout. So, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.